I hang my tip how I like it. Uh, <laughs> no, perverts, I, I swear. What was I, what was I talking about now? You guys distracted. How do they, in those old Chevy commercials, how do they, they're like, how do they do that? Gentlemen, welcome back. We got, don't lean on that. Ah, this, this is a truck now. This one's red, you can tell by looking at it that it's, it's red. Unless you're colorblind, then maybe it's gray or blue. I don't know. Ah, thanks for coming back. Kind of shocked that some of you guys keep coming back. I don't know. I've done. Thanks. Right off the hop, you guys, please hit that subscribe and like and share and bell and but all the buttons down below. They're all free. Just hit them all. No, there's one that's not free. I think. I don't know. I, I no idea what's going on, but subscribe and like it and stuff. What are we doing to old Chev here? Like, like usual. It, it needs. They need some plumbing from up here to get rid of the hot exhaust gases and put them out back so you don't die in a cab. Let's see what, we, what, we're, what we're plumbing, what we're playing plumber today. Come on, come on, come on, Neil. What do we got in this Chev? Well, we got a, we got a hood latch. It don't work. You got somebody who's leaning on it what there's another big snail and another big thing and more holly stuff and this looks this looks fast well you can fit your whole fist in turbo <laughs> i guess there's a yeah there's a half of a downpipe here already it ends right there so we don't have to do one bend and this guess i don't even have to like be up here much this guy tells me that this is a non-existent truck you can tell this is what is this this is an ss but in these years they didn't make ss's in short box regular cab trucks so i what's what did it say ss somewhere on hit the door and stuff well Sure is. I don't know. Besides the seats, I don't know. What, what do you? How do you? How do you tell? Darn clean truck. That's for sure. Like never used. It's almost like Chevy built a short box regular cab SS and never sold it. It just it just disappeared. Let me get her up in the air and we'll take a look underneath her. See what we gotta see what we got to work with. All right, what do we got here? What do we got? Front differential. It's all wheel drive. Well, that's there. Stuff on the motor. There's there's a motor. Aluminum, like a layer of aluminum, some kind of insulation, and then another layer of aluminum on top or something like that. It's kind of kind of a neat. Uh, what do we got? We got a transmission. Yep. Uh, Power splitter uh, transfer case thing for power, I guess. Some more things back there in the rear end. I don't know how all you guys are gonna see, but there's where the exhaust was blowing out. And just from him like loading it up on a trailer and stuff, it cooked these wires right here. So yeah, we're gonna have to clean those up a little bit for him. I think we're shooting for four inch through this hole down over the trans cross member still four inch over this cross member and then this cross well this is a dry shaft hoop and then here split into three dual threes and we want to come back do a couple of mufflers up in this big monstrous area hopefully i can fit them in here and then go up 
over the axle and split them and I think he said he wants uh, straight out the back like it was back in the late 90s, early 2000s where the trucks were straight out the back. Tranny cooler, I think. I'm looking at this frame and I actually saw there's like reinforcement in the frame from the factory. And then there's this thing. This is also a factory piece. I don't know, was that like a some kind of trailing arm that went to the rear end for something? I don't know. I don't know Chevy stuff. I don't know. Let's get after this exhaust. First thing we gotta do is come off of there. Or is it easier to see? Maybe right there. Oh yeah. And there is, you know, I'm catching a hint of farm. She, uh, she has that, she has a little bit of a farm smell to her. What I'm doing here, I got a couple of pieces. Um, yeah, just this little bend. Actually, some of these are cutoffs from, or leftovers from other jobs. Anyhow, you know, this little bend is gonna go right on the end right here, because right now it's pointing down at the frame. We gotta get it to go up and follow the cab here more. Then I got this piece. This is gonna be the next one that goes in there. It's gonna be straight and then turn, going, start going down underneath the truck. So that's gonna fit in there, just barely. Sorry, there's no good way for me to hold this so everybody can see. And this piece is gonna go right here. So what I'm gonna do, so I can use this piece and turn it, clock it, to change the angles of how this is coming off of here. And I want it to be tight up against this pipe, this up pipe that's already here. Stay away as much as we can from the cab and the frame. This does have polyurethane mounts in it, motor mounts, so it is gonna move around some. So we gotta keep it away from both. I think it's gonna be right about there. That's where it feels good. So without moving it too much, take our marker and just make a line across that joint. I'm just gonna take the TIG welder, set this up here and I'm gonna just do a couple of tacks. I got the ground up here. Get your ground on the same pipe and close, close to where you're welding. Disconnecting the battery doesn't do anything. Getting the ground right next to where you're welding is what does something. <laughs> Try to get the armor tack up and go. I can't see nothing. Let's see how this fits before you get too carried away with the tackers. Just like that, yeah. I think it's, I think it's pretty good. And then here too now, okay, I gotta pay attention that I'm able to get this pipe out. A few tacks on each one of these pipes are in there. They're pretty solid. We're gonna pull this, well, see if we can pull this out now. Because you gotta make sure you're able to get the pipe out before you weld everything down. Yeah, can't get it out. Dang it. Wow, what do? There's zip tie on there, I cut that. What does that do? Don't do nothing. Can't go down, can't go up. Can't go side to side. Just locked right in there. I don't even know what to do now. All right, well, I got that pipe out. I got these two joints welded up and now we gotta go down underneath. To get that pipe out, I had to unbolt this crossover pipe that goes up behind this one. And then I was able to twist and bend and finagle and everything that downpipe out and get it out and we still have to uh, there's all you'll see here in a second I'll, I'll just show you a finger width there's like no room for a v-band yet so i still have to come down almost make this bend to start going back like in here i can maybe get a v-band so there's gonna be a lot more pipe hanging on there yet to try and squeeze out of there boy i hope i hope i can get that downpipe in and out of here one of the first things I want to do is throw one of these just straight sections of four inch up in here. Just so we got an idea of what we're, what we're trying to get here to. I didn't actually order polished, but that's what you get. All right, uh, a little sliver taken off. And I reduced the angle just a little bit. I don't know if you can tell if that's a, not quite a 90. And we do have to put a V-band right here as well. So actually, 
I think we were close enough right where we are. Uh, get a little more adjustment and tolerance finagling out of that V-band flange and make this pipe come just a bit higher for here, just so we got a little bit of clearance on this cross member. There is one more little toy we gotta throw in here. And that is this thing. I think is gonna go like right there. What is that? Well, what is what is that? You guys know what that is. That's gonna be the closest I'm gonna be able to get a V-band fit in there. That's gonna be a big chunk to try and pull out of there on that downpipe. Especially considering we already had trouble trying to get that downpipe out. Tack it in there and see if we can <laughs> see if we can pull that downpipe out. I doubt it. Probably not. Okay, uh, I went in a little different direction with this downpipe. I actually put the V-band right on the downpipe uh, in that bend. You can see it's right in that bend because it was tight getting it in here. And I figured we'll keep this as small as possible so it fits in and out of here okay-ish. Like it's tight going in here. Oh, we got it right there. Uh, and then I'll do the dump and all the other stuff down there on the, on the pipe. And this should actually be the, I should be able to leave this on here now. There should be no reason to have to take this down pipe off. And this is the part, this is the other half of that bend that I cut off up there. So this bend actually is going to have to be a little bit bigger now to come back up to get over this cross member. I don't even know what side the bend was on now. Right up tight as close as we can because we don't want this hanging down below the frame rail. We want it right, right there. Right there. That's where it's going. Right there. Just gonna just fire some self tappers in there. That'll be fine, right? For this cutout, we need a couple of things here. Well, one is a flange. That I didn't, they didn't, it didn't, they didn't send a flange. We're gonna cut a hole in here for the dump, but that's not until after we get the straight section grafted on there at an angle like so. Because we want that exhaust to be coming off that down pipe and just straight shot, straight down. And then when we close that flapper, close the dump, then it goes back and goes through the, the mufflers in the back. Typically this back side doesn't have to get cut because that actually like fits up in there. What you kind of are cutting most times is just like off of this highest point on the straight section here. You're just cutting a little a arc, a pie out of there. That's basically it. So when you cut, you're just cutting at an angle, cutting that off, and that should usually is pretty close. Let me let me go. I'm gonna go on the bandsaw and just right straight across there. I'll be right back. All right, so something like that is usually my my first cut. Like I said, just a how do I show you? Uh, just a straight cut across there. Ish. It's usually where I start. And see, that gets you. Pretty darn close. I gotta take off a little bit more up in here. Just like that. And then I'll go cut that and then I'll check it again. I actually got into it a little bit heavier than I wanted to on that cut. Oops. Let's check her anyhow. You can see where it's hitting right there. Straight across there, and then a little bit more right out of this peak, because it's hitting right here. Banta! Too much of a dip in there now. Now I gotta come more like that. Yep. Practice and error. We're at the point now, I'm gonna go grab the grinder, cause, because we're just gonna massage in these little areas here. Grind on stuff. Where's the grinder? Where's all the grinders? You guys watching how close I'm getting to my shirt with that? Are you cringing? There we go. I think that's going to be it. Pretty nice. Pretty decent fit up all the way around. A little bit out there back there but i can hammer that in a little bit when i'm coming around with the weld 
we'll tighten that up, but otherwise that fairly decent joint. That was easy. She goes right there. Now what we can do is take a marker and mark out the inside of this pipe. I gotta go over on the truck, make sure everything is lined up and square wherever. Oh, I gotta clean these edges up too. And yeah, take a marker and all right. Now I have my new line on the bend of where this sits. See, we got. Actually, I got an outside and an inside line. I'm going to be cutting out the inside line. All right, after tons of grinding and working and grinding and working and grinding and cutting, we got something that kind of looks like a, 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 a dump thing. There she's gonna, that's going to be it. So let's, let's, let's weld that all up. Yeah. Got to throw a V-band on there too. Let's go get Go get that big man wing and get. A tiggly torch. I think we're all we're all gone. Touching, just go together. So I'm gonna weld this whole side is tight. I'm gonna weld this whole side. At the same time, weld this whole side that's tight. And then here where it's pulled away a little bit, as we're working that way, we'll, we'll hammer it flat and push that metal out, out here, and then weld up that outside finally. Okay, I gotta go check on the truck. Make sure stuff is pointing in the right directions. Good enough. Well, little trying to hold up three things at one time here, and my fingers on fire. See, that's all it takes, and then that's all tight. Well, up. There we go. It's hot. That's hot. Got it in. This is the part, obviously, that goes to the mufflers. This is the part that's obviously the dump. The dump. We got the dump right here. That's going to be right there. Sweet. Above the bottom of the frame. And the front cross member is actually like two inches below this yet. So there's plenty of, plenty of clearance, Clarence. I just got to make up that stainless flange, get that welded on there, get that clocked right. So this is... I want this a little bit closer to the tranny than this exhaust because that's hot, obviously. Cut this flange, get this all mounted up and done so then we can just get back over this. Get, work, get working on the exhaust back there. All right, we need a flange for this guy because it didn't come with one. So I got my box of flanges pulled up here on the computer screen and this is what's nice about having them loaded on a computer like this, is you can actually like hold that up to it. Let's make that a little bit bigger. So yeah, that's almost too scale. And yeah, you can see it just overhang a lot right here. That would be bad. Eh, yeah, that's not too bad. Triangulate it off. So that would be like that. That still kind of looks weird. Yeah, and then it seems like it comes too straight across there. It's actually gonna get cut off. Went out of the one I got this one, but this is kind of this kind of weird. What's that look like? Well, actually, I don't know. I kind of like that. It matches that whole center section really good. The only thing that doesn't match perfectly or doesn't match nicely is that big bulge this has. Then I just copy that arc all the way around. So yeah, I'll bring you guys back when I get this all drawn up and done and ready to cut. All right, we got it all done. 
up the scale here now and that's pretty spot on. It's a little bit more bubbly around the bolt holes than the actual bracket is here, but that will be that'll be okay. Let's cut that flange out. Hopefully it's the right size and stuff. Sweet. Got all the big center pung on keeping with the Orange circle. And now the outside perimeter. Awesome. The little sheet of shit moves like that right at the end. They caught. Dang, Nibbit. Circle. Yeah, that's not bad. Just got to grind that little nub off at the end. Let's see if that works. All right, so we got the plate. And that should go right over. Car. Yep. All lined up. It's actually a little bit bigger on this inside. Oddly enough, because this plate, this opening, even in the widest part, isn't actually four inches. That flange temper just loosely bolted to the plate. Stick her up here on the market in a couple of spots and take it off and weld her up. There's a line. There's a line. Let's do three lines. Three lines on there. Three lines on there. Let's pull this little chunk off now. Get that welded up. Yo. Oh yeah, it's the uh, next day. This is the final day actually. I gotta get this done today. So it doesn't matter how long it's going to take me. I'm going to have to work all the way till 7 a.m. tomorrow morning to get this done. If it has to get done. It is going in for tuning and dyno session and whatnot tomorrow. So it's got to be done. I got to put a little lip on here because, well, I don't have a flex section. I want to put a flex section in here. We can. I forgot to order one or something happened. So I can't get a flex section in here. What I'm going to do is one of those band clamps. It's like two and a half, three inches wide. And I'm going to put it around here. I'm going to put this little ring on the end so that band clamp has an inch here to hang on to. And I'm going to cinch this side down really hard. And then the other bolt on the other side of the band clamp, we're going to get it down snug, but we're going to leave it just... Just so this is able to move around just slightly, just to give it a little wiggle room for now. And then, well, another day when that flex section comes in, we'll pull that band clamp out, cut off whatever chunk we need to get out of here, and then weld that flex section in right here. Tungsten stick out. How far? Guys talk about really sticking it out there, and they're talking about it like an inch. We got to get in in there so well where you go what in the hell what an inch and a half we gotta get right down in there and you guys see hopefully you can see i don't know if you can see but like right down in there right in there And then we can shorten it up a little bit as we're coming out of the crack. Okay. 
shorten it up a little bit more as we're coming out of the crack. She's blue. She's warm. I don't even think I explained what I was doing here. Uh, this is going to be the four that splits into a twin threes back here. Now you know. Why don't you guys ask? You're just sitting there. Like, I wonder what he's doing. Why is he welding that up? Right down in that crack hole. Can you guys see down there? And I didn't weld to the end because four inches is actually like up here somewhere. We gotta measure and then cut and then make that four inch form to that. That'll be our split. That'll be our splitter. Split, split. Here's our four inch coming back. So yeah. What I do for these, here's looking, is I actually squash this four inch down to do an oval so it fits this and then see how far I can bury this pipe in up in there and then cut it off and do a butt weld. Nice, nice transition from whatever to whatever. So let me go, let me go squish this and get it down to this oval shape, what this is gonna be. All right, I squished the end down here a bit. I think you can see it's ovally there now. So let's see. Oh, yeah. Well, that's pretty close already. I don't want it to be a slip fit in there. When this is squashed down in the end, I want this to be a butt joint. So I want that to actually like butt up against this three inch. Not like a slip like that. But it's right there. I mean, it is. It is snug on the top and bottom. That's pretty nice. Um, let me squish, well, actually let me mark it where it is now and I'll squish this a little bit more and we'll cut these three inches off and start working on that bunt joint. You gotta get that centered up perfectly in there. Make that mark, cut, cut and squish and come back and see what's happening. Okay, we got this pretty well centered up this way and this way and all the ways, so I'm just gonna make a mark along where, well, you guys, it's gonna be hard for you to see, but. Make it a line along this. Four inch here. So my plan is, is to cut like a quarter inch over from that line all the way across because remember I want this to be a a butt fit a butt joint butt up against each other but I don't want it to be a slip joint like this inside so I want it to be a little bit further up where it's wider and hopefully it meets up and butts up against this and you do a nice swell I gotta squish this in and out down a little bit and cut this off I got that V cut off See how this, oh yeah, right off the bat, right off the hop, right off the hop. Wow, this is, this is so heavy. Everybody look, hurry up, look, look. Look at that joint, oh that nice joint, yep. Yep, 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 that, that's nice. Pull it up. So one of you guys pull this up for me while I, Throw a tack on there? Yeah? No? Oh. Well, thanks for trying anyhow. One small tack on there and flip it over and just see how she lines up with the other side. Well, oh, pretty darn nice. She could come up a little bit. Oh, it's just because it's over a little bit. That's not bad though. That's pretty. Pretty decent all the way around. Actually, I think I'm gonna call her. Mm -hmm. 
Wish I was in a Where's our split? 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 Yeah, you guys can't see it from there. Alright, split is just about done. We gotta do the bends out here to get this back going straight. And then we're going into some mufflers. Oh yeah. Mufflator traders. Mufflers? Mufflers. Yeah, put some mufflers in that car. Sir. Sir, sound. It sounds like there's something wrong with your car. It sounds like your muffler is bad. Sir? Sir? Sir, your car is very loud. All right, uh, don't mind the mess on the bench. So our plan is, well, two mufflers. And my plan all along here is I already measured it out. I got enough room to stick these side by side and right up against each other. So when you look and see underneath the truck, it just looks like one. Unless you see it from the back, which I don't know if you're going to be able to see these underneath the axle and uh, I don't know. You, you probably won't even see them, but anyhow, uh, yeah, we got the split. I just welded in uh, a bend on each side to like straighten both of these sides out. And then I went in a bandsaw and I just did one cut across both of them. So both of them are super flush. I don't want to pull this out completely, but they're... they're they're in line with each other because I just did it in one cut. Uh, there's going to be V-bands put in here yet. But what I wanted to measure for is we're shooting for just that tiny little gap in between them when they're on here. So then we want to measure and I want to do a brace on the back side here. So these, they're braced and tied together. Uh, so in the tailpipes, there'll be V-bands on this side as well for both tailpipes. Um, the tailpipes will, will be kind of locked in. They won't be able to like flop around. There will be less stress on all the joints. So yeah, I'm going to make up a brace to weld in that backside there. And We're just watching a dry run here now just to make sure everything is going to fit where I want it to fit and do what I want it to do. like that. Can you guys see? So between the mufflers and I'll just do a hot hot pull. I'm just gonna do a like probably three stitch welds inch inch and a half long on each muffler on each side. You do a continuous weld if one weld starts to crack or if the weld starts to crack, a continuous weld, it'll crack all the way around and break off. Stitch welding, like an inch or inch and a half, like individual welds, it stops in between. If one weld starts to crack, it'll go through that one weld and then crack, but it won't propagate to the other welds. You know, they won't continue on because there's a stop there. So you got like a better chance of at least one weld holding up. There is a plastic film on the outside of these mufflers yet too, so you gotta be careful you don't melt that too much. Well, for frog snacks, dip that tungsten right in there. Oh, buttons, hard to hit the buttons. Hopefully you guys can hear me, the bike is on top of the 
camera. Usually I wear it, but I can't. I, I don't know. I got oh yeah. So I got the pipe in here and the mufflers tied up with super fancy rope. There. That roll. That's the that's good roll. And this is just about to fall on my head, so I just gotta throw a couple of tacks on these B bands. I gotta sit down here. Everything is straight clutch, plug up uh, blue. It's it's all straight. Fish. Careful, we'll follow ahead. I, I decided to make a, well, at least one hanger wire. We're, since we're here, got everything in here. I already started. This is just a, well, I got one bend. This piece of stainless, I think this is 3 8 Really, I should have maybe had half inch for this, but. Anyhow, yeah, that's going to go up there, come out of the hanger. Go over to the top of that plate and get welded on there. And then I'm going to do another gusset from like in the center here up to it, up here somewhere, just to reinforce that so it's triangulated and whatnot. But I just wanted to show you guys that I was here. Oh, I do these hangers. Ugh, nothing special. It's just, like I said, I got one bend coming out of the rubber hanger already. And then I'm going to mark it over here. Right there. For the next bend but i gotta keep in mind the radius so you can't bend right on that point you gotta come back a little bit because that radius will push that rod out there a little ways all right all right i don't know why i always say all right i guess it's just all right basically we just want to come back and come back and plane with this so this is a little more than a 45 i want to bend this up so it goes like I said, in the same plane as up here. This is just, I took two piston wrist rods and stuck them in a bar, and then that's just very cruelly welded into a box tube on the end. And this one pivots, and this one's bolted in. This is, I, don't know, I just throw this in a vise. Let's see, we're going back this way. Right? Yeah. So we gotta go. I remember that radius will come up on that a little bit. Watch it be a little short. I'll be like, son of a diddly. All right, let me clamp that down. We're clamping that little tang of the bender and this rod down in the jaws of the vise. And I just, well, this is what's here. It's one of these. You know what these are. The lug wrench, cross wrench. I just hooked that in there because, well, this is just what happens to be here. And I just pull. You hear I'm eyeballing that this is just straight up and down, so that should match that. Is that, is that like a Z? Is it a Z? Yeah, maybe I could go a little bit more. I'm gonna go check underneath the truck. Let's see if this is gonna work. Slipper in the hanger. Well, that's pretty good. A little bit more of a bend I think I can make in it. Or do I need that? Maybe I don't even need that. Yeah. We'll go just a, just a hair more. Alright, let's try again. Uh, hopefully this is bright enough underneath here for you guys. Oh, that's going to fit nice. Look at that. Perfect. Up in here, and actually, what I was gonna do, well, you'll see, I'm gonna weld the washer on one side so that butts up against the outside. And then I was actually gonna thread the other side of the rod so you can put a poly lock on the other side or nylock or even a the pinched high temp nut that locks. Put something on that side so we can not snug down on that, but just keep a nice centered so it, it can't slop around. And then I'll weld across there. Yeah, we'll get that gusset in there. Yeah, get it done. Stainless can be a bugger to tap. I found in, well, if I don't have cutting oil around uh, um, the, the urine, what is it? Muskrat piss. What is this called? Looking right at it. 
penetrating oil. Holy crap. There's too much stuff on there. I have found that not even this brand, like I don't get paid for brands, I don't know, whatever. Uh, penetrating oil works in a pinch for cutting oil. <laughs> I just finished tapping this. Not tapping, is it dying on the outside? Uh, and of this stainless deal. The hanger for the spiel. I just wanted to make sure I had enough threads there. So yeah, it's up against the nylock there. So yeah, it's got enough to bury that nylock. And this is far enough away where the heat will cool down some from the exhaust. So even though the exhaust will be like, what is it? 500 degrees, 600 degrees, 800 degrees. By the time it gets out here, it's dropped a few hundred degrees if it's stupid hot, uh, a couple hundred degrees. It doesn't affect the uh, nylock as bad. And obviously the same thing for the hangers. It doesn't affect the hangers that much. Right, I gotta finish welding up these V-bands and then that whole section can go on and stay on. I got one more hanger I gotta weld on there, but I can do that in the truck. So let's get this all on and then it'll be just tailpipes back from there, so let me get taken apart there. Yeah, do it, do it, do it. Stack, same numbers and stuff. This is like a perfect peel. Look how beautiful that is. We're getting closer. Mufflers are there. We've got that hanger up to that rubber there. We got that hanger off of the pipe up there on that side. So this is all balanced out now. Now we're kind of starting with tailpipes and that's, uh, it's a little time consuming because you got to stick around with every piece and where it's going, but it's, fairly straightforward you just plan your out where you're going you get around the shock you go up over the axle there's one piece at a time oh you gotta go this way yep okay gotta get around that shock oh, and then bend back follow up this other pipe up we're gonna come over axle and then come down and one is coming straight see there's a hanger right there we're going straight out the back so one's just gonna come straight the other one is going to have to go across, up in front of that cross member, and then turn and come on, yeah, over here. So yeah, we're getting there, closer than ever. It's it's well past dark. Yeah, I don't even know what. That's my bedtime, I think. Uh, we're getting close here now. We need to no know bends, so we need to know where we're going. Out here. Uh, the last few bends here, I mean, over the axle and stuff like that, you're just trying to get clearance any way you can, make sure everything is going to be okay. But when you get out towards the end, uh, personally, the tip is the most important part of the exhaust. That's what everybody sees in the back here. So I always want them straight. So when I'm getting close to the end here, I stop and I hang my tip. Uh, this isn't the one I'm going to use uh, per se, but I hang my tip how I like it. Uh, <laughs> no, perverts, I, I swear. Uh, I want to know where I'm going. Uh, I want to hang up where my tip is going to be so I know what I'm aiming for up here. Otherwise, you come down up here and all of a sudden you start building back, building back, and you get to the end and you're like, well, crap. No, this is like way out of where I, I wasn't trying to get to here. Or you put the car down on the ground and the tip is like 45 degrees pointing down at the ground. <laughs> uh, hang it up. Uh, I mean, personally, I hang it up 
so I know what I'm going for so I can start working towards that goal right here way up here before we get back here and then once I get my bends and everything to match up there well then it's basically pretty much a straight shot here this is the exhaust you want is that uh, I think I mentioned this already that typical 90s straight out the back and slash cut oh my goodness it's like one in the morning I think I've been out here plugging along at this forever still not done I just wanted to show you that I got all the pipes tacked up these both tail pipes all the pieces all tacked up all the way to the last actual tip I do not tack that on until we are completely done welding everything up and getting everything <clears throat> in and where it's supposed to be uh, reason being is especially stainless when you weld it it moves around a lot um, so tack up I usually only tack up like a few joints at a time and then weld them out and then tack up a few more joints and keep working my way down but trying to pound this out I just tacked up all the whole tailpipe on each side up to the tip we're gonna leave the tip for the last so I'm gonna pull these tailpipes out weld them all up put them back in and then we'll actually we'll do the actual weld on the tip in the truck we'll set it up We'll get the slash cut, we'll get everything all set up, dial in, hung, everything right where I want it, and then we'll just buzz around it right in the vehicle so then it's perfect. Otherwise, you weld it outside the vehicle, moves around a little bit, you put it back in, and then it's not right. So, yeah, let me get these out, get these welded up, and oh my gosh, I am ready for bed. Everything is finally all welded up. Everything all the way up to the tips. So you see, that's where I got that teeth. That's one continuous section, and then we're just gonna do the slash cut on the end there. This side too. You see the strap isn't even holding it, the tape is holding it up. So that'll be another one. I'll mark it, do a slash cut on there, and then get everything perfectly aligned, measured out, gaps everywhere. Tack, 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 tack. Check everything again, look at it this way, that way, sit back, stare at it for a long time. Everything looks good. Everything measures out. Everything is good. While they're out, I got a hanger on each side, and we, I think, are done. I don't even know what time is. I, time is just, it's just gone. I'm nearly falling asleep in the chair. I'm going to mark these. Get a pen. I'm just going to come down from the bumper, make a mark, and mark all the way around on both sides and cut her up a little weld oh yeah uh, the weld these are seam welded pipes for the tips usually down because you're always looking at the top of them uh, the rest of the piping all the seams pointing up because you don't see the tops typically for the slash cut I just have a piece underneath the, the back of the place sits on, so they're both the same when I cut them. There's our slash cut. Oh, 1990. Sure is. Oh, man. I, I just, I'm dead. Finally, after what seemed like forever, got it all well lit up. I wanted to show you since we're back here, you look across the tips. Where's that other tip? You can see the slashes mark match and the slash itself. When you look across, you look at this far wall. And when this far wall lines up with this wall, it should match up with that other pipe perfectly if you got them both in line and you do that same thing both pipes looking across this far wall as soon as it lines up flush with this wall you should be looking across at that other pipe nice and flat straight both of them are parallel with each other oh yeah uh, all welded up, finally. 
take a quick quick zoomy through here and take a look at everything we got these are pretty long hangers that's hot don't don't touch that but they they hold up pretty well uh fingers finger gap this is a plastic bumper and turbo vehicles this pipe gets hot so make sure you got finger gap for plastic fenders plastic bumpers and on turbo cars naturally aspirated a little bit cooler in the exhaust but still uh, you, anytime you come up with plastic abs uh, any kind of rubber made bumpers get that finger gap otherwise you're gonna melt it yeah uh, i i i don't know pipes this kind of sucks a little bit i ran out of like the normal natural finish elbows and had to use one of the polished ones on each side for that final bend yeah whatever oh they can be scuffed up with something oh, coming forward go across the axle you guys saw all this hello up hangers v-band flanges mufflers are tied together they got just a like an eighth of an inch between the pinch welds or the formed whatever ends of the mufflers that looks that looks pretty cool it's hard to come across on the video but that looks that looks pretty neat those two cans next to each other and coming up v-bands in front of the mufflers so you got you can drop just the mufflers out into the split four inch all zua and then here's that i don't know if i showed this a span clamp in temporary uh, in place of this will be a flex section later on oh, that'll cook off of there uh i gotta wait for it to come in nobody in town has a four inch stainless not even a four inch uh flex section the bellows flex joint so we're gonna use this in time being um crank down on one side and then the other side just snugger up and then it'll allow some flex in that pipe and that joint get my ground out of there and then yeah the dump right off of the bottom of that of that down pipe so a down pipe comes down off the turbo dump right there all the power and noise oh v-band right there as well so you can pull off that down uh, the bottom and then also that allows to get the downpipe out and that goes up in there so. all right there she is one stainless exhaust there's out the back 90 style slash straight out the back truck tips actually looks pretty cool i like it kind of a kind of a timeless timeless look to them i do have them eh, i mean i can maybe go back with them a little bit here again you want to get it past that bumper otherwise the exhaust gas is coming up out of here can melt that bumper i got some works in here i gotta take off yet but i'm super tired I think it's, I think the sun is coming up. The sun coming up? Maybe, I don't know. So, damn it, I gotta get that wheel back on her. Dang it. There we go. Thank you all for watching. If you made it this far, come back, hit that like, subscribe, that little bell for notifications. You never know what we'll be working on. They got, a, they got almost like ETMs. Yeah, at a couple of the gas stations. Yeah, you might want to think about I'm going to start it and let it warm up so it can, uh, yeah. it's cold blooded as hell. Sure. Just and see how it sounds. Is this on E85? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs>
pretty cool. Hopefully you guys got all that.